The ex-fiance of Stephen Avery, who was the subject of Making a Murderer, a tremendously successful documentary series on Netflix, has now spoken to Nancy Grace, and she has recanted her allegations that were represented in the documentary series. Now, if you've seen it, uh, you'll notice that she is very supportive of St Stephen Avery. She makes a claim that she was speaking to Stephen Avery on the phone while the alleged murder of Teresa Halbach was occurring, right? Um, but now she's talking to a reporter or an interviewer who works for the Nancy Grace show, and she's completely changing her story of who Stephen Avery was and whether or not she thinks he actually committed the crime. Let's take a look at the first video. I was in a bath and he threatened to throw a blow dryer in there and he told me that he'd be able to get away with it. What was the reason? He's sick. What was your relationship like with him? Not good, abusive. What kinds of things would he do to you? He'd beat me all the time, uh, punch me, throw me against the wall. I'd try to leave, he uh, smashed the windshield out of my car so I couldn't leave him. I was at work one day and he was up there spying through a window. I got in the car after work, I knew nothing about it and he just started slapping me and got back to the jail. They told me I wouldn't be working anymore so I couldn't see him because they noticed the red marks on my face. How long were you in a relationship with him? Two years. I think it's really weird that they didn't cut away from the interviewer while she was, you know, the, the interviewee was answering the questions, right? Um, anyway, at, at least that's how you edit room. an interview it's, down. Huh? I mean, that's one thing you do when you edit. You yes. have both cameras, and you use that to kind of get rid of something you don't want to use. That's true. That's a maybe good they point. wanted to show her face. Who knows? So, um, look, I, I think it's important because obviously she was used in the documentary to make a point about how Steve, Stephen Avery maybe didn't do it, didn't commit the murder of Teresa Halbach. But what I also find interesting is that Jody, that's her name. Uh, in the documentary was on probation uh, for a DUI arrest, right? And so her Multiple. probation, yeah, and m m other other issues that she had with the Lady law. Lady likes to drink. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I mean, I don't want to do character assassination of her, but what I also find interesting is in, in the documentary, hold on, in the documentary, <laughs> she was told by her probation officer that she is not to see Stephen Avery. She is not to have any communication with him whatsoever, and she didn't listen. She continued communicating with him, and then later on she had to leave the county that she was in as a result of that. I don't know if that means anything, but it's just such a huge difference from what you see in the documentary. I don't so know. So this comes down to what the documentary is fundamentally about. And you can watch the documentary and see it as being fundamentally about whether Stephen Avery is a murderer or whether he was turned into a murderer or not by the fact that he was falsely imprisoned for 18 years of his life, got out, and then was accused of killing somebody. But you can also look at the documentary as being about how your opinions are created by what you see. Mm -hmm. So you could also, you know, depending on what these documentarians had in mind when they made the show, you could see them as going like, all right, it is our thesis that Stephen Avery was not given the benefit of the doubt in the public eye because everyone in the media jumped on him, and so we are going to make the opposite documentary where we only show the positive things for him. We only show parts of the discussion that Almost make like him seem the innocent and framed. Yeah. So is that fair? Well, is what happened to Stephen Avery fair? And that's why I like to look at it that way because it becomes a more broad conversation. Right, that's that's a great point and a good angle to kind of look at this story. But one thing that I want to get out of the way before we continue talking is that when it comes to murder, and this is usually on a federal level and on a state level, if you want to convict someone of murder, they have to be guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Beyond a reasonable doubt. And those jurors do not understand that concept because if you have all the evidence, including the evidence that wasn't included in the documentary series, you still come up with reasonable doubt. 
So how do you convict a man of murder if there's reasonable doubt? I don't understand. That's that's the part it's, that kind of gets well, to me. There's more. There's more. But go ahead, jump in. Okay. No, the reason. Yeah, I want to. Of course, I want to jump in because obviously the justice system. Uh, this documentary is aimed, in my opinion, at pointing out the flaws in the justice system, mm -hmm. and if there are corrupt individuals that want to either tamper with evidence or uh, conduct a corrupt investigation to uh, point the finger at someone. Um, they can obviously do that, right? And the documentary does a great job with showing that. And again, it pl uh, it levels out the playing field, and it shows uh, uh, a side of Stephen Avery that wasn't painted in the in the media originally. But in the end of the day, the prosecution still had to uh, had to show opportunity and motive beyond a reasonable doubt for that for for them to even be able to prosecute Stephen Avery. And I personally think. That obviously, and I've talked to, about this in extent before on What the Flick and other places. I think that Stephen Avery actually did it. I think there's actual tampering uh, mm -hmm. with the evidence, which made it harder in the long run for people to real uh, to people to convict to him beyond yeah, convict him beyond a reasonable doubt or believe the prosecution because it kind of paints him as a criminal mastermind if he genuinely did it the way the prosecution said he did it. Right? And look, people are now getting a little critical of the documentarians because they feel like there was a lot of evidence that was not included. I've read all the evidence that wasn't included, including um, accusations that there was Stephen Avery sweat uh, near the trunk of the car, right? Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, the hood of the car, I apologize. Well, and it the turns Star 67, out like dialing multiple times. Stephen Avery uh, res reserving Teresa Hall back to come in and take photos of the car under another person's name like there are there are there the prosecution has presented enough evidence obviously for them to be able to not not convict them obviously that's still up to the jury but at least to uh, put together a case but and what's there your were... conclusion after reading that evidence okay so my conclusion is for every piece of evidence that was not included in the docu uh, documentary um, the defense had a great answer to it right so look Stephen Avery is a strange guy. I don't think Stephen Avery is a good person. He literally lit his own cat on fire. I know, which is one of the first things you look at in someone who's about to have deviant behavior is their initial behavior that looks questionable is on animals, cats, dogs, True. people who shoot dogs, True. or cutting serial or killers. Cutting as leather. As I, I understand Apparently. that, really? Brett. I yeah. understand that, but I also know of people who are perfectly lovely individuals right now who were cruel to animals when they were underage, right? Mm. And Listen, I don't think he's Adnan. I don't think Adnan, who killed that girl in Serial, I don't think he's that culpable. Uh -huh. I think he's more less likely to have done it than Adnan. But I think you know Stephen Avery. Yeah. I I, also, I agree with you. I don't think there was enough evidence, and definitely the way it went down, the guy needs another trial. Dude, yeah. He was wrongfully convicted of a rape and served 18 years in prison as a result of that. The same county who wrongfully convicted him then proceeded to investigate this case, even though they weren't supposed to have anything to do with it. While Manitowoc there was County, a case against The them. blood that was found in Teresa Halbach's car, okay, was, in my opinion, from the vial of blood that was tampered with. Okay. There was a vial of blood in the county, and of course they had that evidence on him because yes. of the wrongful and, conviction. And there's so much okay, more, like the jury, on. the jury's yes, obviously. Yes, let me finish my point though, because I have to finish, finish this. Make your point. Why the hell was that vial of blood punctured? I want to know, why was that punctured? That by itself, I think, leads to some reasonable doubt. The, the prosecution argues, oh, well, we found a bullet on the property that had Teresa Hallbach's uh, DNA on it. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. There were bullets all throughout the property and it's very easy to plant Teresa Hallbach's DNA evidence even, on a bullet. Even that sample was contaminated. Yes, exactly. By the tester. Thank you. Which should result How convenient. in inconclusive. How convenient. I think it's all horse crap. Look, and I, I like the process I like the defense attorneys uh, that Stephen Avery was able to get. Mm -hmm. I like their approach to things. They, were they great. seem like the more likable people. Unfortunately for the entire process, like I don't the reason this is so popular is that people don't know what to do with this information. We yeah. don't know what to do when we see injustice or just the justice system appearing dysfunctional. We don't know what we would do in the first case when he was wrongfully imprisoned for raping someone that he didn't rape. What that would do to someone, you, I don't know what to do with that information, let alone a trial that unfolds the way this did. Yes. And so not knowing what to do is the most frustrating, terrifying thing. And I'm not even Stephen Avery. But yes. what? And the question is, what do we do with that? Because that's the only place where we, we can take action. 
Okay, what I like about this documentary is it revealed what's happening in our justice system. There is a two-tier justice system. Luckily, Stephen Avery had the money because of the settlement from his previous conviction, a uh, wrongful conviction. Luckily, he was unlucky. Uh, like a very small proportion of it, too. Yeah, I mean, he sued for millions of dollars, and then he had to ultimately settle for four hundred thousand. Yeah. He used that four hundred thousand to pay for the awesome defense attorneys that he had. But even then. I mean, there was this incredible case built against him, and a lot of those things were, I think, proven wrong, and it still didn't have an impact on a jury that's supposed to convict him only if they think he's guilty beyond a reasonable right. doubt. And that's the part that bothers me most. And let me just finish my thought on the DNA evidence that they found under the hood, okay? <laughs> it was never proven that that DNA evidence was sweat, okay? So the prosecution, in my opinion, continues to, you know, dole out these little bits and pieces that weren't included in the documentary, but the reality is, you know, as soon as the defense has answers for it, I'm inclined to believe the defense because they have good answers for it. Yeah. yeah, you know, the jury, the idea of the jury, when we watch things like 12 Angry Men, mm -hmm. seems like such a noble process. We've all been in jury duty, and it's it's it can it's 12 schmucks. You know, it's 12 except people. Except for me when I did it. I was Even, except for Anna. But here's the thing is when someone's putting a jury together, they're either going to say, like, I don't care what the other people are. She's my person, and she's going to convince everybody else of what to do. Yeah, that's true. And There's that's what it seems happening. that are the best at picking the right kind of person that's going to do that. Yeah, what was his name? Um, there's this great lawyer I read about. No, I saw him on, it was Keanu Reeves in The Devil's Advocate. 